Hey there, and welcome to the third chapter of the plant microbiome module. Within this module, you already got insights into the plant microbiome, which was further exemplified on the apple plant. Today, I will explain you how we can use the microbiome as sustainable and ecosystem-friendly alternative to current crop production systems. And we do need sustainable alternatives. It has been predicted that world's population will reach 11 billion by 2050. In correlation to that, projection models showed a 56% increase of total global food demand. At the same time, by 2050, the available arable land per person will be reduced to 50%. Today, one-third of world's soil is already degraded and soil degradation is an irreversible process. Apart from urbanization, it is especially the agricultural misuse during the past 100 years that led to soil degradation, pollution, climate change, a significant loss of biodiversity, the emergence of multi-resistant pathogens and an overall disbalance of ecological cycles on the entire planet. To meet the nutritional demands and guarantee also safe food for a growing world population, it is imperative to produce food sustainably. The microbiome is one of the most promising solutions to increase agricultural productivity while protecting environmental health. The first plant beneficial effects of microbes were discovered already in 1890 for nitrogen fixing bacteria on the roots of legume plants. After that, more and more microbes were identified to provide essential nutrients to the plant or to enhance the plant's capability to take up those nutrients. Microbes support the plant during germination and stimulate growth by stress alleviation and the production of growth-promoting hormones, detoxification and osmoprotective enzymes. In addition, microbes protect their host against pathogens by producing antimicrobial compounds or by triggering the induction of the plant's systemic resistance. However, accompanied with the loss of plant, insect and animal diversity over the past century, we likely lost a large share of microbial diversity as well. Especially chemical pest control affects the microbial pool in the environment, since products that are meant to deplete one specific pathogen often affect the whole microbial community, including also those which are beneficial for the plant. As a result, plants might be less resilient to biotic and abiotic stress, which requires even heavier treatments and pest control. But also breeding changed not only plant characteristic towards desired properties such as increased productivity and yield, but unintentionally it also changed the plant microbiome. And again, as a consequence, several of our crop plants show a reduced ability to cope with biotic and abiotic stress. However, knowing that provides us also opportunities to develop breeding strategies under the consideration of the microbiome. This means with breeding we can select for specific plant traits that enrich beneficial microorganisms. Here the microbiomes of wild relatives of our crop plants can be helpful since understanding the interactions and processes which occur under natural and balanced conditions are also highly informative for agriculture. This idea has been initially postulated within the so-called back-to-the-roots concept for agriculture, which main objective is to restore biodiversity. In this regard, also seed microbiomes, including the ones of wild plants, are very interesting. Remember, microbes that are transmitted to the next generation through seeds emerged from an intimate relation with the host plant and might feature some desired functions for the emerging seedling. Another promising resource for plant beneficial microbiota are disease suppressive soils. In such soils, the abundance of pathogenic soil borne microorganisms is strongly reduced due to the antagonistic activity of a diverse microbiome and the plants that are present. So, what are microbial products? How are they produced and how can they be applied? So, the search for plant beneficial microorganisms usually starts by selecting habitats with interesting characteristics, such as the before mentioned natural environments, wild relatives of crop plants, or disease suppressive soils. In the lab, microbes are isolated from such seeds, plants, or soils by cultivating them on nutrient rich media. 
Those isolates are then screened for desired plant beneficial functions by molecular, analytic and bioinformatic tools. Afterwards, they are reintroduced into the living system, first under sterile, then under non-sterile conditions in soils in the greenhouse. If everything works well and the plant beneficial effects are consistent and statistically significant, such microbes are formulated into a product, which is applied first on small scale and then on large scale agricultural fields. Microbial products can be either directly applied in soil near the roots of the seedling or integrated into seed coatings. Microbial products can be single microorganisms or synthetic microbial communities of different complexity, so-called syncoms. Syncoms follow a community-based approach, which is being more and more accepted in science and agriculture to provide long-term, persistent and multifunctional growth promotion to crop plants. Another option is the application of microbial volatile organic compounds. Such metabolites are produced by microbes to communicate with the plant or to suppress plant pathogens. Volatile organic compounds can also be captured from the producing microbes in the lab and are afterwards applied on fields. Lastly, we can also indirectly shape the microbiome towards a plant beneficial composition by changing environmental conditions. So another critical aspect in food production is the post-harvest period. In total, 45% of all produced vegetables and fruits is lost on the way from the field to the consumer. Especially fungi causing food decay and spoilage represent a huge problem worldwide. Currently, heavy countermeasures, mainly based on chemical fungicides, are taken to maintain the quality during the storage period. But also here, after harvest, microbial products can be applied to supplement chemical treatments. Microbiome management for crop production has already been proven highly successful in many cases. However, on large scale, it is still a big challenge, which is not really surprising when you consider all the environmental factors that influence the microbiome and its interaction with plants. And for making use of the microbiome's benefits, we must understand and integrate all of these factors. In fact, we still need to largely expand our knowledge on the structure and function of the plant microbiome in nature, in the field, after harvest and on global scale. Naturally, not all crop plants growing all over the world will respond to a microbial treatment in the same manner. And also in the future, there will be no one-fits-all solution. We will rather need to elaborate tailored treatments to enhance the health and productivity of certain crop plants in a specific environment. And we also need to further elaborate on the methodology. So far, we can cultivate approximately 10% of all the microbes in our labs. We have to find new isolation and cultivation approaches, but also innovative methods to formulate them into products that we can apply on agricultural fields. The continuous achievements in multi-omics and culture-omics, fingerprinting approaches and microbial network analysis are seminal tools to achieve our goals also on a global scale. So that's it about the plant microbiome. I hope you agree that it is fascinating to research and promising for our future. Next week, we will dive into the human microbiome and its importance for your own health. See you there.